have learned that anybody else, any, anyone's perception of, of you is irrelevant. It's your own. When I started lifting weights, people looked at me and thought, I was 11 years old and I was in a weight room. And, you know, that I remember the, the looks that they got from the other kids that are like, well, this kid's got a, a really severe disability. He's never going to be able to do anything in here, so why is he in here? And the looks that I had, I mean, it really penetrated me. We don't even have to use words sometimes to communicate, especially when we're communicating an extreme emotion, whether it's doubt or empowerment. And, and that, that, that hurt, but I kept with it. My dad helped me figure out how to go and adapt weights to go and use, and I used to tie ropes around my arms and um, would go and lift free weights. My favorite lift was off my back doing a modified bench press motion. It's a butterfly and a bench press. And uh, it's funny, I'd watch the other kids and I'd see them bench 200 pounds. You know, these are high school kids. And I was like, wow, it's incredible. I'd love to be able to do that someday. And that was, at the time, I mean, I was lifting like five pounds on each arm. I mean, I was like embarrassed at how light the weight was. And gradually kept getting stronger and stronger and stronger. By the time I was in high school as a freshman, and I had that 200 pound bench. It's pretty funny. I weighed about 100 pounds. I had 100 pounds on each arm. And when I put the 200 up for the first time, the rope broke on my right arm. So the counterbalance flung me across the weight room. <laughs> The, um, you know, it was gradually kept getting stronger and stronger after that. When I was 17, I broke GNC's world record for the world's strongest teen, lifted 240 pounds 23 times in one set. And just last year, last February, I had a 420 pound bench press. You know, when I started, I couldn't have seen what I was going to be capable of doing. You know, and, and instead of succumbing to that doubt that other people would go and cast on me, I, I knew that by continuing to go and, and work for something and towards something, then I would be capable of more than what it was, regardless of what it would be in the end. I'd be able to do more than what I was at right now. And once you have that belief, set that you can't you know possibly improve past your condition your situation or your circumstance then you won't you know or if you believe that for somebody else and that's even worse because now you're just projecting that doubt into someone else right it's not even their doubt it's yours i mean i get that all the time where it's just now i've kind of dealt with it you know, in different, you know, humorous ways. Sometimes it's, it's pretty funny, like, I just gotta, you know, have fun with it. I remember a crazy time in, in New York. I was in the airport flying to, uh, I believe, Toronto for in between the fence. And every time that I pull up to the gate in the plane, then there's always, like, the gate agents there, I see that look on their face, like, oh no, I've gotta board this wheelchair. And I'll go up and talk to them. I'm like, oh, it's fine. Like, I'll walk to my seat on the plane. It's no big deal. Um, there was one lady that um, was pretty funny. She, this isn't in New York. Did totally different time. But we were in, it was in Los Angeles, actually. I, was, I had just released my book. I'd been on Oprah Larry King in 2020, like, that weekend. She was like, I saw you all over the news in these different programs, and you can wrestle and do everything. She said, do you need any help getting to your seat? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, did you watch anything at all? <laughs> no, I'll walk, I'm fine. And she ended up arguing with me and like finally I had to kind of like succumb to what she was suggesting. There's a, a special wheelchair that they use to help. If you need the help, it's awesome. It's called the aisle chair that they'll use to go and strap you in to go and take you down the aisle. But this thing, like they strap your legs in, your, your um, chest in, and your head in. So I call it the Hannibal Lecter chair. <laughs> but, like she was, I finally had to go and tell her to get the aisle chair, and she went and, and grabbed it, and I grabbed my bag.